It's all of us, man. Some things will never change. Chelsea are always going to win against Spurs at Stamford Bridge. You bottle jobs. You've bottled top four. I remember hearing for like eight weeks straight Tottenham fans telling me how they were going to win the league. Win the league. You've bottled top four. Oh my gosh. It takes a special caliber of person to be a Tottenham fan. Yes, it does. And my gosh, we got to start asking questions about old Ange Imposter Coglu because he's done the double for Spurs as per usual, losing to Chelsea. Nice one, Ange, your big flange. Honestly, Chelsea Football Club, when it comes to Tottenham Hotspur, we don't mess about. We haven't lost at Stamford Bridge. I think it's once in 30-odd times. It's water is wet type of stuff when Tottenham come to the bridge. And you know what? It's pretty much the same when we go over to White Hart Lane or the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's always a blue day. You know what makes it even sweeter this time is that in one of our worst ever seasons, your best ever gaffer is blue. He's done the double over you. Tottenham, what is that about? Because this bloke is so clearly not good enough for Chelsea. He's your best ever manager. And quite honestly, I'd be embarrassed if I was a Tottenham fan because what your team turned up with tonight was ludicrous. That is one of the worst Chelsea 11s I have ever seen in the Premier League era. And we have spent fortunes. You can barely name a player off the bench that's got a Premier League ex- a Premier League minute, let alone Premier League experience. And Tottenham didn't turn up. Let's not lie here. Chelsea weren't amazing, but Tottenham, oh my gosh, Alfie Gilchrist put Son in his back pocket. Son was non-existent. People are talking to me about Van der Ven. Where's the question marks around him at set pieces? Where's the question marks around Tottenham's defence at set pieces? You're all over the gaff. You left Trevor Chalibur unmarked on like three different occasions and he scores. You You didn't look at it and go, oh, we need to pick him up. It's a mess. Ange was outdone by Pochettino, a manager renowned this season for having no tactical nous, no tactical awareness. That is embarrassing, Tottenham. Spurs, you're Spursy. You told all of us for weeks at the beginning of the season how Ange was going to win you the Prem, how he was going to get your top four. And every single month, it's got less and less. And I love that. Because this is what makes it so beautiful supporting a team and being able to have it over Tottenham every single season. I hear the same old stuff from Spurs fans. I hear how well the season starts, how well you're going to do, and month by month, your optimism is drained just a little bit more. And by the time we get to April or May, your hopes are in the absolute bin. And look, Chelsea are having a shocking season and you're all going to come saying, oh, where are you in the league? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you couldn't beat that team, could you? Because we've done the double over over you this season. And to be honest, if we're looking at the game, realistically, I think Chelsea have identified a way to beat Tottenham. Today, more so than the last game, wasn't necessarily about the high line or how Ange sort of leaves his players out there to die. Chelsea Chelsea tried to execute a few long balls over the top and a couple of passes in behind for players to kind of have a race onto, but we weren't that good. We, we really didn't maximise that type of opportunity a lot out of this game. Where we really did work wonders, though, was from set pieces. We really did. Look, the Cole Palmer one that comes off the bar is unlucky, really, for Spurs. But the Jackson header that ends up going in is solid. Um, And the Trevor Chalobah one is poor. Defensively, it's poor. But let's not forget, Cole Palmer in the first couple of minutes could have easily scored in an open goal, and he didn't. We got in behind 
or the opportunity was there to get in behind a numerous amount of times. And yes, your recovery pace is exceptional, especially with the types of players like Mickey van der Ven. But ultimately, you offered nothing. There were spells in that game where Tottenham were on the ball, on the edge of Chelsea's box, and there's nothing there. And then in transition, Tottenham really didn't offer much. I never really felt at threat today at all from Spurs. And what's so worrying for me, looking in, is, is Ange losing this squad? Are they starting to think, hmm, this guy's leaving us out here to die every single week. He's so set on this high line that they're now starting not to believe in him. Already, you starting to see this Tottenham team turn their backs. Or is it just the mentality of Spurs to bottle moments, big games, European challenges, title challenges? Is it, is it just the mentality? Does Ange perfectly suit Tottenham that you're just running out of steam at the perfect time for everyone else's entertainment? Because I kind of think that might be the case. But it's concerning from the outside looking in that Tottenham have done it again. But my gosh, it is sweet. And... I'm delighted. Whatever's happened this season, the fact that we can do the double over Spurs in one of our worst ever seasons is just perfect, isn't it? It really is. It's one of those feelings that is just indescribable because Tottenham never ever really get to experience it. They ne they don't know what it feels like to do the double over Chelsea that often. And it's it's amazing because even when I feel like things can't get any lower, even when there's Tottenham blood literally dripping through Chelsea. We've still managed to beat you twice, home and away. And the, you know the you know the craziest thing about this is Chelsea's season has been so drastically bad. And funnily enough, Tottenham's has been probably in their top five Premier League seasons ever. And they are potentially, potentially, there is a chance that Tottenham and Chelsea could end up in the same European competition. Yes, it's a long shot, believe me, for Chelsea, but it could happen. And if not, we're both fighting for second-rate European football next season or third-rate in the Conference League because you just don't know where Tottenham could drop to now because we've seen it before and we could see it again. Tottenham... I'd start looking below you if I was you because Villa, they are out of sight. And Chelsea, well, look, it's an important win. It really is. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I have no idea how Europe is still there on that fishing rod, like the carrots being dangled in front of us after the season we've had. I, I just don't understand it. Every single time I look at the table... It's like it's not getting further away. There was that period of time when we were sat in mid-table. We're slowly creeping towards it. I think it's going to be a little bit little too little too late. We've had a couple of games where we really haven't looked that good. And imagine if we turned up in those games. I'm talking about Sheffield United, your Burnley, your Brentford, your Wolves. Imagine we turned up in those games. I think we'd be level on points with Spurs. That's 12 extra points that we would have in the Premier League. I don't know if that exactly puts us level, but we would be a lot closer. I think they're on 60 and we're, we've got to be on 40-something. So it's it, there's a discussion to be had there if we'd have turned up. Well, we haven't, right? But I, I just don't get how there is potential that after everything... Europe is still potentially there. We've got a massive game against West Ham. I think we're probably in and around where West Ham are in the league right now. Which, they seemed a long way off a while ago. And the fact that we've kind of closed that gap says that things have potentially gone well for Chelsea. However, if we're being realistic, they probably haven't. And, and there's been some embarrassing moments. And... I'm not going to hear any potch in shouts. I'm not, because I, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't think that even today, in a win that's a 2-0 victory against Spurs, we were that good. I really don't. And I don't want to hear people telling me, I'll oh, give him time, give him time, because I think there's too much that's already happened that, for me, you can't recover from. But 
look, if victories are there and we can move up the table, then I will back it. But the, the, the issue I have is, on the football pitch, I'm not seeing Chelsea on the ball, playing away that I think is acceptable. I'm just not. We've got the win today. It's barely a goal from open play. Did we create that many chances? Not really. Were Tottenham there for the taking in open play? Yeah. Did we capitalise on that? No. There's a there's a massive problem with injuries at this club and there's a lot of other issues. But, but at the end of the day, I will be absolutely delighted if for the rest of my life, we can keep doing the double over Tottenham Hotspur. Tot oh... I can't even speak. I am that happy because there's not been that much to be happy about this season, but beating Spurs and doing the double over them is one of them. One of those moments to just treasure and hold close when it's that bad for Chelsea fans. Just remember that sweet, sweet feeling and the pain that Spurs feel every single time they come to Stamford Bridge. It's been a pleasure. We'll look into the game a little bit more, I'm sure, in a, in a few days before the West Ham game as well. We'll talk about that. That's a massive game for us, by the way. A massive game. I'm, I'm more nervous for that than I am for, for the Chelsea-Tottenham game tonight. We're on the road to 2,500 subscribers. If you want to join the community, community, make sure to subscribe and smash the like button if you're enjoying the content. And I will see you in the build-up to Chelsea-West Ham. It's been a pleasure.